Hey yo, this is Lefty. <clears throat> Coming at you uh, for the Thurman and Garcia video. So, I'm going to go over the two undercard fights real quick and then get to the main event. So, um, Andre Fanfara is fighting against Chad Dawson. Chad Dawson, uh, he hasn't had a good five years or so. His last five years have been taxing for his career. He's 34 years old now. Fonfara is coming off a loss against against Joe Smith, who might have the most common name in boxing. Um, now, Fonfara has lo has uh, left his Chicago trainers and is actually working the train uh, with. Virgil Hunter, who's Andre Ward's trainer. It'll be interesting to see what kind of changes he makes uh, because of this. I'm looking for definitely a more conservative approach. That's what happened to Abner Mares when he went with them. So we'll see what happens. I'm looking for Fanfara to show better angles, to be a little bit more conservative in the ring, have a much more active front side. Uh, and what I mean by that is to be jabbing, to be check hooking more, to be to be pivoting on that front foot. Um, that's what I expect with Virgil Hunter as his trainer. We'll see how much how how good Virgil Hunter's style and what Virgil Hunter brings to the table meshes with Fanfara's abilities as a fighter and his mentality. But I'm expecting Fanfara to to be able to win a decision. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to knock Chad Dawson out. Um, possibly he might. Uh, if, if, if it happens, I think it'll happen in the last third of the fight. So, you know, starting in the ninth round, possibly on the twelfth. So, I think fun far I'll get back in the win column. Uh, the co-main event is Erickson Lubin against Jorge Cota, if I'm saying that right. Um, Erickson Lubin is a really good prospect at 154. He's uh, got extremely quick hands. He's got good power. He's been brought up pretty traditionally as, you know, as a prospects go so we'll see what he's you know what what he's able to bring to the table Jorge Code is one of those guys that he's a consummate professional fighter um, he's a step up in class from what Erickson Lupin has faced and but I'm looking for Erickson to uh, I'm looking for him to to really to really get it going now in his career. I'm looking for him to really start facing real guys. And Jorge Cota is a, a... He's the closest thing to what he's faced as a real guy. So I'm expecting Lubin to possibly win by knockout. Oh, in the middle of the fight, um, round six or eight. Now... On to the main event. This is one. Of, I think this is one of the biggest welterweight fights uh, that can be made right now. I'm trying to think offhand, what's a bigger welterweight fight? Probably Manny Pacquiao against any of these guys. So, but not name Manny Pacquiao. This is the biggest fight that can be made at welterweight in boxing, and it's on free TV and CBS. So, if you don't have anything to do Saturday, please support it. I'm definitely going to be watching it. I work nights, so I'm going to wake up early to watch it. Because usually I wake up at about 10 o'clock p.m. every night. So, anyway, with that all aside, let's uh, break down these fighters. So, we got Keith Thurman. He last fought nine months ago. Um, both fighters are 
within an inch in reach and an inch in height of each other. So I don't think any of that's going to be coming into play. Um, Keith Thurman has the the quicker feet. He he moves. Now his movement isn't. See, and I say this just about every video, and it's crazy how much people don't do it. But he doesn't pivot. You know, if, if he moves, he moves in like a non-boxing traditional, st you know, like he doesn't move in his stance. You know, if you want to if you want to see what I'm talking about, watch the uh, Thurman and Porter fight. When when Thurman doesn't want to fight, he basically moves either with his hands down or with his hands by his chest and he just moves laterally along the ropes but his movement uh isn't effective you know it's not what i would call ring generalship because he's effectively just trying to disengage until he wants to fight again whereas someone like a like a Floyd Mayweather, because Floyd Mayweather moves a lot laterally too, if he's in a corner. But Floyd Mayweather, more often than not, would stand, would 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 be moving at angles uh, on the outside of the punching range, or mid to to on the mid to the outer parts of punching range. You know, it's it's harder to say it you know like if uh just 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 watch the Thurman and Porter fight like I said you'll be able to see what I'm talking about the lateral movement along the ropes so the movement really isn't that effective or if you want to see what I'm talking about Peterson and Garcia basically the first seven rounds of Peterson and Garcia whatever Peterson did okay now Thurman when he was fighting Porter nine months ago, which I think nine months is his longest layoff of his career. And I don't think anybody's talking about that. But when he was when he was fighting uh, Porter, he was a little fat in his punches, and he would lunge every once in a while. He would lunge, he would he would just do things that uh you know, I don't know if it was because he was fighting Porter, who's his friend, and he just really wanted to get at him, or if it was the nature of the fight, but he made some mistakes in there, and with with a nine-month layoff, the longest of his career, does he necessarily come in sharper, or does he come in not as sharp as nine months ago, or does he come in the same? If he comes in the same, I think that is bad for him. Because that guy, the guy that fought Porter, that version of Thurman, uh, was lunging, throwing the right hand. I didn't see him jabbing as much. He used that non-effective lateral movement that I mentioned earlier. He was fat with his punches, and Porter was able to catch him at times. And Porter's not known as a crazy counterpuncher either. He's, he's, he's an aggressive guy, so if anything, Porter is the one that gets countered. But even Porter was able to lay some counter shots on him. And Danny Garcia is a master counter puncher. That's how he earns his, you know, that's how he's earned his career, his money, is by counter punching. So I think that is, uh, that is big in this fight. Now, as for Danny Garcia, oh, and Thurman's looked at as having the best competition out of the two by fighting Porter, but I'm not necessarily sure that's, not necessarily sure that's a thing. And Thurman also is looked at as having the most power, but you know, who who's he knocked out? He's uh you know, he you know, the 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 further he's progressed in his career, the more he's boxed and the less he's looked to knock people out. Danny Garcia, on the other hand, has faced Lucas Mathise. And people forget that Mathise was heavily favored in that fight. And was a monster at the 140 pound division. So Porter was under, you know, he he wasn't undefeated when he fought Thurman. So you know, I'd I'd, I'd really question those people that would say, 
hey, you know, uh, Thurman has fought the better competition. I'm not sure about that. Be, you know, sure, Matisse was at 140. But he was a big 140. So, um, I would say Matisse at 140 is better comp than Porter at 147. But that's just me. Now, as for other guys that Danny Garcia has fought, you've got uh, Lamont Peterson. You've got... You've got Amir Khan. I'm not even going to count Eric Morales. Uh, I think Eric Morales, account, you know, uh, I, I guess you could kind of count him because he had to fight with Maidana at 140. And that fight was crazy. And, you know, of course, Maidana went on to give Floyd hell in their fight. So, I don't know. You could kind of count Eric Morales, but I don't know. Uh who else has Danny Garcia fought? Um, he's fought a few other guys. Okay. Now, um, Danny Garcia, I think, has fought the more consistent opposition. And he's fought, you know, the best fighter out of the two, in my opinion, which is uh, Matisse. So, you know, and ever since then, Matisse hasn't really been the same. I'm just not sure, you know, he he got knocked out against Postal, and that was just a, a bad knockout for him. And he was really rolling when, uh, when he fought, you know, when he fought, uh, before he fought Danny Garcia. But anyway, you know, that's my opinion on the competition that, that uh, the, the guys have fought. So... Let's go to uh, what does Danny Garcia do well. Uh, one thing that Thurman does not do well is sometimes his hands don't come back from punching high. So his hands come back low sometimes is what I'm trying to say. Danny Garcia is a type of counter puncher. He'll time you and then, you know, he'll look to fill out, you know, he'll, he'll look to fill up those deficiencies with counter punches so i'm gonna look for him to do that in this fight danny garcia right now is a two to one underdog okay plus 200 in this fight and that's where i took my money i got danny garcia at plus 200 which is an excellent price because i think this fight is 50 50 so there's value in a danny garcia pick at least in the beginning of the week there was now um you know, Garcia counter punches, he jabs, he likes to jab, jab to the head, then jab to the body. Um, you know, he'll, 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 he'll do some body work. One thing that Danny Garcia is better than Thurman is uh, defensive responsibility. He shows better angles. He has his hands up. He's a really good fundamental fighter. And, you know, there's nothing really special against, you know, about Garcia as far as, like, power or speed or his defense. But he does all those things very well and does basically nothing below average. So you put all that together and his ability to figure out his opponents and catch their timing, and you've got a pretty special fighter. Now... Thurman is a pretty good fighter himself. I just think he's 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 a little bit more talented athletically. And that's where his edge is in this fight. Danny Garcia, I believe, is a better boxer. And I believe on Saturday the better boxer is going to win. I think Danny Garcia will win a close decision. Either way, yeah, yeah, I think he's gonna win a close decision. Um, this, you know, with with the, with boxing being the way it is, the decision could probably go either way. But I'm gonna lean toward Danny Garcia, especially with him as a two to one underdog. I believe there's a lot of value in that close decision, uh, in Danny Garcia winning, or at least picking him. 
you know, like I said, in my last video, I picked Grenados over Broner. I said, uh, you know, Grenados was a three to one dog and, you know, Grenados was a three to one dog and I saw the fight as 50, 50. I see the, this fight the same way. So, uh, what happened in that Broner fight, you know, Broner had all the advantages which isn't the case here. So I believe Garcia can get that decision. However, uh, if 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 you don't know what the uh, you know what the value of the pick is, you know what the value of the underdog is and all that, hit me up in the comment section, and I'll help you out. But I believe that two to one, those two to one odds, are ridiculous. This fight should be fifty fifty. This you know this fight should be even money, and it's not. And for whatever reason, they got Danny Garcia as the two-to-one dog. So I'm going to put my money there. And I'm going to go with Danny Garcia by a close, competitive 7-to-5 decision. And we'll see how everything shakes out. But on tape, you know, I can only go by... You know, that's the problem with predicting fights. Is that I can only go by, um, by what I see. And I don't know how these guys are preparing in camp. I don't know... I mean, I could guess, but I don't know for sure what they walk around at. I don't know what kind of, uh, you know, what, how they're training in camp. I don't know any of that stuff, unless I get it from an inside source. But I, uh, I basically have to crunch tape and see what they do in their last few fights or whatever, what they used to do, what they do well, how, how are they trending. And every once in a while, I'll get surprised because, you know, guys come in either way better or way worse than what they were on tape, you know, than, than what they were trending. But based on what I see, Thurman has deficiencies that I think Garcia can take advantage of. I believe Thurman early will try to replicate Lamont Peterson's plan and move a lot. And, and try to possibly tire Garcia out with movement. What the fight is going to be about is Garcia, how well is he conditioned? And will he be as tired at the end of the fight that... Will he be as tired versus Porter as he was against Lamont Peterson at the end of the fight? And how many early rounds can Garcia lock up to avoid a late fight collapse okay because even if he fades late if he locks up you know four of the six early rounds he can afford to lose three of the six late rounds if you you know if you do the math if you catch what i'm saying so um i think the fight comes down to that specifically so we'll you know we'll see what happens either way it's a great fight so uh, this is Lefty. Hit me up in the comments section. Hit the sub or the hit the sub and the like button if you want. You know, thanks for uh, always turning. You know, always uh, tuning in for my videos. So, you know, let me know what your thoughts are, what your prediction is. I'll hit you up. Peace.